Welcome back. In this lecture, we will discuss association rule mining. Here's our lesson objective. Okay, so here's the problem. Given a transaction database, suppose we have a set of frequent item sets all having some level of minimum support. This can easily be done with the a priori algorithm. So how do we take that result and now find association rules that meet some minimum level of confidence or empirical probability. So it's actually quite easy. Simple extension to a priori. So if you have mined a given item set Z, simply find all other item sets X that are non-empty subsets of Z. And now what you do is you compute um, set Y, which is simply Z minus x, and now your confidence for the rule x then y is simply equal to the support of z divided by the support of x. Now we know, based on how we've defined support for a rule, that the rule is already going to meet the same minimum level support because z meets that level. So let's consider uh, our running example, our market uh, basket analysis. So these were all the item sets that meet a minimum support of two. And I put in parentheses here what the support actually is. So we now know if it's more than just being greater than two, greater than or equal to two. Now applying what we just showed on the last slide, here are the confidence values for the rules. Now what's interesting to see is that you have interesting um, relationships. So for example, looking at if, um, you know, if peanut butter then jelly, every time someone bought peanut butter they also bought jelly in this data set. But if you compare that to if peanut butter then bread, that only happens uh, two-thirds of the time. You also have things that um, there's, there may not be kind of this monotonic relationship um, between rules. So for example, if someone buys bread, it's only 50% chance that they buy jelly. But likewise, if they buy jelly, then the chance that they buy bread is now 66%. And this type of thing occurs all the time in data. Um, and so you have this really nice notion of implication that you get from the rules and the probability gives you this little bit of intuition as to some of the things that could potentially be going on in the data set. Now you see rules like that and some of you may be thinking well this might be really interesting for something that looks more supervised and this actually is um, another use case of rule mining and called class association rules and here you're looking to mine for items that where you have an item set as your antecedent and you have a separate group of items that can only appear as the consequence and this will be your target class. And these two sets will be disjoint and you can also have multiple target classes but we'll talk about this in terms of one. And all you've got to do is you just find all item sets that meet the minimum level of support and then you look at every place that item set occurs and the target class did versus when it did not. And we'll run through like a quick example here. So let's say we have an item set of, um, you know, peanut butter and jelly. And then let's say we have our target is bread, okay? So we have a case here where, and these are all transactions. So we have a transaction here, peanut butter, jelly, and bread. You have peanut butter, jelly, and then nothing. T3, peanut butter, jelly, bread, and I like that. So now uh, all you've got is you know that, okay, peanut butter and jelly, that's, you know, itself a frequent item set. 
what we do is we count up the number of times that it occurs with bread, which is two, divided by the support of peanut butter and jelly, which is three. And this gives you our confidence. So it's very simple to compute, not much different than what we talked about before, but you have the added caveat that your two sets of items are disjoint. You wouldn't necessarily need to consider your target class as part of the item sets using the a priori algorithm. You could, and you can you know, take a slightly different approach, but in actuality, it ends up being all about the same in terms of runtime. So that concludes our lesson on association rules. Stay tuned for more content.